In this video, we're going to be talking about my goals for the Edinburgh Marathon. What is up, everybody, and welcome along to 40 Runs and 40 Runs HQ here in Hertfordshire. Now, is it raining where you are? Because it is here. It's absolutely chuckly down. Let me know in the comments. Right, okay, so this is video two of our little series. Um, and this one, we're going to be talking about sort of the goals for Edinburgh Marathon. Now, if you didn't know, and you've not seen yesterday's video, um, the Edinburgh Marathon is my kind of A race uh, in the spring. Been training for this uh, really actually since October last year with an eye on it to run um, a time and put a time down. So that's, that's why it's an important one. Um, some of these races we do just because we want to do them, but this one's a little bit more important because we put some uh, more focus on the time and what we're trying to achieve. At this race so in, the, in this upcoming video that you're going to see in just a sec we're going to talk about the, the goal of the race and how i'm going to achieve that in terms of pacing strategy and and that kind of stuff how i'm approaching the race i think that's that's key and hopefully maybe you get some tips out of it but more importantly than anything else you guys can follow along on sunday and see what we come out with on the day you know what we're going to be going for okay right so i filmed this video while i was doing our last long run uh, of this marathon training block so it'll bring you up to speed on where we're at and what we're looking forward to on Sunday. Welcome back everybody to the Lee Valley and in this video, like I just said, we're talking about my goals for Edinburgh. The Edinburgh Marathon, if you don't know where Edinburgh is, is in Scotland here in the UK. So we've always sort of focused in on this race as a bit of a A race target for the start of the year. So like I said, we're going to talk now about sort of race strategy, race goals and plan sort of times, but also what plan B looks like. So we're writing the training plan for this block. I always pretty much start with most of my plans with the goal in mind. I think for me, it's a logical way that then I work back from there. So I stuck down 3.45 with the A of trying to train to be just a fraction under that. That was always the plan. Uh, and that was before I had the surgery. Um, was, that was always the plan to go under 345. Uh, surgery came, surgery went, surgery went well, nothing naughty there. Uh, and I sort of kept to the 345 plan with the goal of running that at 835 per mile, which is about 520, I'll put it up on the screen, per kilometre for the uh, full marathon distance. So that was always the goal uh, in terms of achieving it. And I think that is still the goal as we come right at the end of this training block. Come on to strategy in a minute, but I wanted to just really cover the sort of, I don't know, the mindset I think for, for accomplishing this. And it is really to sort of be focused on the distance and the time will take care of itself. And what I mean by that is literally clocking off the miles as I go past them. I'm going to be focused on on those rather than necessarily what's the pace and dealing with the pace. I'll have the pace pro on, but I won't be focused on it. It'll be more of a question of each marker, making sure how I am, where I am. Because when you're pushing, you're pushing hard, you need to check yourself over literally every mile to see where you're at, just in case you do need to go to plan B, which I'll come on to in a sec so yeah for me the important part now in terms of the race mentally is i'm going to be ticking it off as we go along mile by mile and let the pace almost take care of itself so strategy is a bit of a funny one this one because edinburgh marathon is downhill for the first five miles yeah roughly you start in a city and you head out and you head out pretty much to the coast and once you get down that coast you run up and down it a few times there's a few undulations but nothing crazy we believe in terms of hills thank you there's nothing crazy in terms of hills that we're aware of uh the biggest i think thing we've got to think about is the conditions because it can be really blowy along the seafront if it's if it's a blowy day down there it's really blowy so that may impact it but there's nothing we can do and we can't control it but in terms of the overall strategy the downhill section at the start does does impact my strategy and my thought process so we're going to start a little bit quick actually we are going to start 
just under goal pace to start with for those first five miles. Uh, just come up to that sort of nine K, 10 K area at a fraction under goal and use the course to help us. You know, it's a lot easier traveling down hill as we all know. So to take that momentum with us, get a little bit in the bag and then ease back off uh, a fraction so by the time we get to halfway we kind of evened it out a little bit but we've got we've got time in the bag and that's what I want to do is get to halfway pretty much you know on even money where we needed to be in terms of getting the, the, the job done but the first five miles we're definitely going to go at it a little bit quicker to make the most of those hills so find balance because you don't want to crash and burn but at the same time you want to make the most of the conditions. So I'll set that up on Pace Pro and then I'll allow for a slightly slower section probably towards the end, naturally, and then try and pick it up again. But it, it, it's going to be good. It's going to, I'm confident about the strategy, actually. It's one of the things I'm feeling really good about uh, in terms of getting to that halfway stage. I think if we can really get there in, in good shape, we're going to be feeling good and ready to go. And that's, that's what excites me about this strategy. And after that, once, once you get, get the 21 miles or whatever, you just got to hang on, right? So if you're going for a PB, when you're at that distance, it's all about hanging on and mentally going through it. And that's why I said, you know, just in the other section about ticking the miles off, the pace will take care of itself. So that's the sort of A plan A, I would say, in terms of running it. Running it hard, then easy, then harder, then easy. But if that all goes belly up or tits up, whatever you want to say, we do have a plan B. We spoke about this before on the channel, having a sort of gold, silver, bronze um, goals for a race is a really good thing to do. So we just spoke about gold. Silver, plan B, is basically halfway or whatever, 50 miles and the wheels are coming off, back out and we look for sub four. That's it. Uh, just to get another sub four under the belt, Thank you very much. Nice to see you, Edinburgh. I'm off to get something to eat. That's, that is as simple as I can make it. And if I've got enough time in the bank, which we should have from crushing it at the front end, we should be able to easily get that, oh, easy, there's nothing easy about that running, but easily get that sub four as well if it doesn't go according to plan. And then we've got our bronze prize, which is just to finish. You can never predict what's going to happen on race day. Right, so having, having your mind a little box that says, I don't really care, I'm going to walk the rest, I'm just going to finish. Because some days, it just ain't your day. But if you know that before you start, you are actually already winning. So that's the sort of bronze, or plan C, or plan Z actually. Um, look at this view by the way, check that out. Not too shabby, is it? But yeah, in terms of race strategy, race plans, Plan C is basically just to finish. And I think everybody needs a plan C in their locker. So there we go, that's the race strategy for a 345. Sub 345, we'll see. We'll pace it well. But it is what it is. It'll be what it be. The weather's terrible, nothing we can do about it. So but the most important thing is we're gonna have some fun. And that's what it's all about, people. Pushing ourselves, yes. Trying to challenge ourselves, yes. But most importantly, you want to finish and you want to remember and look back and go, you know what, that was great fun. Not just the race, but the whole training, the whole journey. You learn so much about yourself. You're always improving as a human being. And it's nothing but a positive experience. So yeah, there we go. I'll see you on the next video. I'll catch you later.